Uh, welcome to One Word a Day. I'm Sophia Pilot into the universe of Chinese. Let's continue unpacking our January well wishing expressions. Um, okay, so today, what would in Chinese well wishing, a lot of times you actually hear money focused. And we have been covering a lot of episodes about uh, variations um, of ways of wishing each other make more money this year. Um, so this is continuation of that streak of and here we especially talked about sources of money so i guess it's stream of revenue <laughs> in in that sense so uh, meaning you have multiple different sources of money uh wealth and they are going to funnel into you on wide spectrum enter into your household okay wealth again we have this seashell shape money um dollar sign not dollar sign okay just like a dollar sign as a money symbol well symbol chinese have this well symbol uh that's a transaction so transaction currency ancient times the seashells was used to uh used as a medium to carry value right um and this seashell have this shell looking thing with two horizontal lines supposedly the, the 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 marks or the streaks on the seashell um or the patterns and then the two dangling little legs are the soft body animals supposedly living in the seashell so in any case it's a depiction of the seashell and that eventually we, we forget about the seashell nature of it and then it becomes this embedded symbol of money of wealth okay now we already have money transaction currency why you have this right part the right part is the crucial part of what conceptualized as wealth in chinese okay the right side means potential so basically potential money potential transaction currency potential means you unspend it's under your name, under your private property. You have it, but you haven't used it. This pent up transaction currency, not spent. And that's the definition of wealth. So this potential is defined by, okay, this cross. This is a ground level and this is a plan. And then we have a second, second cross intersecting with the, supposedly the root of the plant. So the emphasis is on the root. The root in Chinese symbolize the potential of things. Um, it's unobservable because only above ground, the tip of the plant, you can see, but you don't know what's coming unless you look under the ground. And that's not an easy thing, easy thing to do, right? Like how many of us have the technology, have the time, have the resources to go check out something underground? I guess that's what, I don't know, the wealth management company is supposed to do, right? They are supposed to go unearthing some invisible things to the public about some potential investment to check out the potential of things, right? And so this potential then symbolize, symbolize of this underground part of the plan um, combined with currency symbol to mean unspent, untransacted currency that accumulated over time. So this is accumulated unspent wealth. Okay, Yuan, we have this top, okay, top left corner of the frame. So Chinese is a box, right? So if you have a, a full frame, <laughs> okay, if you have a full frame for size, that's that is mouth symbol. Okay. If you take out the bottom, this is, means high ground. This is related to mountain. And if you have this symbol framing the bottom, the bottom line and a little bit of the sign here, that means low ground. So high ground, low ground, and high ground means some something related to mountain, right? That's taller than us, measured by human height. And then here, 
you see the same thing repeated three times. That means multitudes of them. Um, and this almost like omega looking thing with a horizontal, with a T, right? Like English letter T. Um, and with a little bit of a, a tip on the top. That symbolize the pot breaking moment. So the pot breaking, um, I guess, because we're not so much uh, tied with the land anymore. So we don't, like me, I didn't grow up uh, to observe the moment when the pot open, um, that the fruit or the seed pop open into the air. I mean, I can, I, I can probably check out, it's stored digitally somewhere, but just out of my daily life contact, I don't get to see that. I guess that was way more common when people are still living off land. It's part of their natural you know, lifestyle. I mean, lifestyle back then as an agrarian society. So using the symbols from their everyday life was a way to relatable, right? And people can figure out, okay, popping of the, the seed. So this T shape have, okay, this horizontal line means the seed is abstracted into this one horizontal line. And then this direction of this going out of the pot, that gives you the momentum or the trajectory of where the seed going is going outside the pot when the pot is open. So this pot open moment then used to depict the origin of things because when we see the seed, it's already popped outside, it's visible. But before the seed becomes visible or be part of the world that's, you know, we can visually see directly, it's within the pot. And so this pot opening moment then emphasize the origin of the seed. And there are three of them, means multitudes of the origin. And all three of them stack up connected to this tall ground high ground uh, that's related to the mountain. So that means the origin, something sourced from the mountain. And you see the contemporary Chinese have this three dot thing, that's the water sign. So the, the origin was used to mean the origin of the water. And I guess we all know water, one way is precip precipitation, precipitation, right? I cannot pronounce that. So um, either in a snow form or in the rainfall, it's water coming down to the land, right? And one major, like if it's not a rainy season, you don't have a direct spring spray sprinkling of water from the sky. What you have is this, this water source stored on the high mountains and then as the ice melt, and then you're going to have tracks of water going down mountain. And that's what's depicted in here. It's a multiple source of, as if it's pot opening. It's the source going to the origins, the, the very beginning of the water formation in the tall mountains. And the water sign was skipped over here, but it talks about the origins of water and eventually it extends to origins of everything. Okay, Guang, high ground again with a tip on the top. So according to scholars, this means uh, shelters, human shelters built next to the mountain. So imagine in a house building, okay, at the beginning we're just cavemen, right? So we live inside naturally occurred caves, but caves are limited. You're going to overpopulate the caves, right? So eventually humans have to master the technique to build shelters themselves. And at the beginning, I would imagine if you have a mountain high rise thing, structure, a cliff or something, it will be much easier to build with one side of the wall right next to the, the mountain, right? At least you have a cover already. One side is covered. Maybe if you're lucky, you have two sides covered already. And then you, 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 you cover the top to have the shed formation before humans master the technology to build everything ground up from scratch themselves. So build next to the mountain was 
you know, the beginning of house building journey of humans, I guess. So this depict that like half of it is attached to mountain. And then probably technology was not mature enough that the other half is wide open. All humans do is to kind of add a lid <laughs> to the to the side. So you kind of have have a shed of sorts. Okay. Um, so that's that wide open side and also next to a mountain, that kind of semi-shelter, semi-man-made um, state of living condition, then used as the wide. So I guess in a sense, it's wide open <laughs> because only half of it is, is uh, walled up, but the other half is you're out facing to nature. So in a sense, it's, it's wide open and then eventually extend it to wide. And I guess because it doesn't have the wall on one side, it's almost like you're inviting the whole nature in. Um, you're not putting yourself under a, a full closure, which is a definitive space. But if you take down one side, you only have one side up there protecting you and you're facing the whole outdoor. That's like an infinite amount of space you're kind of utilizing to your own living quarters right so that in a sense is guang it's wide okay Qi. again we had it last episode it talks about birdly walking so bird is on the right side a side view profile view of a bird and you just need to know this horizontal lines means anti-gravity <laughs> uh puffing of the bird's hair which is feathers feathers go horizontally and then the beak of the bird and the feet of bird so you you got it right the the bird image now the left side means walking because we have a three toe foot symbol and then we have footsteps three of them is enough to show you progression in space so foot symbol by itself means standing still with a progression it means walking now we have birdly walking and that means going forward Supposedly, I guess the language makers assume birds can only walk forward and that's the way to enter. That's the, well, I, I guess enter is a derivative of forward walking. So when you have something can only forward walk, walking, that means it's going to progress walking into your sphere eventually if that thing can only walk forward. So then it, it becomes enter. Tai Yuan Guang Jing simply means you have multiple source of wealth and so widely open sourced and they are going to be funneling all toward entering your private property. That's Tai Yuan Guang Jing. And I translate it as, because last episode is wealth attracting and this episode got to be something different. <laughs> so I translate it as Tai Yuan using this Yuan, this sourcing like a wealth sourcing as the main distinguisher of this year, uh, this, you know, money, wealth wishing, well wishing, wealth wishing expression. Okay, so you can see somebody put this behind the Chinese architecture and you can see this is an overlay uh, image uh, in front of that. And this probably is a small scale, but they want to put in this background as if it's a big statue, but no, no way, because this is a wood carving. If it's this big, that means it's a giant tree carved into this in one piece. And that's a lot of waste. So this is a smaller scale sketch statue, but still it's a wood carving from one piece of this Buddha with this rosary, so you can see, um, and with big belly, big belly in Chinese concept in, I guess, still hunger fear back then uh, when we don't nail agriculture yet, right? Whether you can feed enough population with enough food was still a concern. So this big belly represent well-fed. You have enough food, you, you have food security. So then that extends into symbol of wealth. If you have a big thick belly like that, that means you have enough resources to eat well. And that implies the whole resources behind it, which is you know, symbolized by this money symbol. Uh, by the way, this is the gold or silver storage and people like to make it into this almost like a boat looking shape. 
and that's a Chinese um, money symbol again, and carve, just in case you didn't get the message, <laughs> carve it, Tai Yuan Guang Jin, to show, okay, you're gonna make money left and right, all kinds of ways, you're going to make it this year big time. <laughs> so that's Chinese Tai Yuan Guang Jin. Cash into the currency of thinking about one word today, with Sophie, see you next